everybody, it's the Commodore from the Clan of the Grey Wolf, and you are watching the Weekly Ringer here on clanofthegreywolf.com. So, this week we've got a tremendous amount to do. This is uh, this could be a long one, let's just throw that out there right now, because we've got to do a lot of review of some of those old Nickelodeon shows that you guys brought up from last week's question about the ideal Nick block which uh, I've got a ton of stuff to get through for that. Um, I'm going to pick a winner of my favorite block that you guys submitted after going through all the great shows that you talked about. And then I'm going to give my own ideal block as well for last week to tie things up. Then I'm going to bring uh, a question for next week about the state of PC gaming today here in 2011. All right, so uh, last week, as I said, the question was about Nickelodeon shows because there was a, uh, a new um, series called The 90s Are All That debuting on Nick that was supposed to go back and kind of look at the classic 90s shows, and they picked a, a, a four block, which I thought was, uh, let's say, less than stellar. And I, I asked you guys, what would your ideal block be from the 90s if you could pick any show that was on Nickelodeon um, at that time? So, here's what I'm going to do for this. I'm not going to go through and kind of look at each and every person's block. What I'm going to do is talk about the highlights of that, that people mentioned over and over again. And there's a lot of them um, to go through. So I'm going to go through those, give you my thoughts on them, and, and, uh, and try to kind of tread over what the best moments are from all those series or, or whatever the case might be or maybe the fact that they even got mentioned I'm just going to go over the, why they're why I think they're they're definitely worthy of mention um, then I am going to highlight a block that I think um, is the best if I had to pick one if I had to pick one out of all the ones that you guys suggested which one I would pick to watch and I'll probably talk about a few other things here and there in the meantime so uh, and then I'll get to mine which is going to be a little bit different so here are the best show contributions that uh, that you guys put out there. In no particular order, just just want to run through the the, the the list very quickly. Doug, Hey Arnold, Pete and Pete, Salute Your Shorts, um, Clarissa Explains It All, The Angry Beavers, Ren and Stimpy, Rocco's Modern Life, Ah Real Monsters, Are You Afraid of the Dark, The Secret World of Alec, Alex Mack, Hey Dude, All That, Rugrats, and Keenan and Kel. Those are the ones that seem to pop up in the conversation the most. Um, now let's go through and talk about some of them, shall we? <laughs> um, because that's, that's where the fun really begins. So let's start with Doug. We, we mentioned this when I, talked about, when I asked about Nicktoons uh, a while back. Doug is kind of the quintessential Nickelodeon cartoon. It... It, it's, somebody said, uh, commented about it later on, how it's, it's a little unremarkable. It's just kind of a good show, and it gets out of the way. I agree. I think Doug really does speak to um, the teenage condition, which is, at that point in Nickelodeon's history was exactly what they were trying to, to build into. Many of us grew up with Nickelodeon uh, as children and had kind of moved, uh, had grown up a little bit, and, it's, and didn't want some of the younger programming that Nickelodeon had. Hence Nick Jr., which spread off for, for the kids, and they, Nickelodeon tried to grow up with us a little bit. And uh, then, you know, Teen Nick came along very much later in the scene, and that was a disaster. But anyway, you understand, uh, Doug really became the show, I think, that, that spoke to that. Not anything spectacular, not the greatest show of all time that Nickelodeon ever had, or even the greatest Nick tune that they ever had. You guys can disagree with me. But I think it was very funny, and it was very good, and it, it did... Um, a lot to relate to the teenagers and and uh, you know prepubescent adolescence, which which described my condition at the particular point in time when it began airing. Um, hey Arnold takes up the the banner for Doug in many ways. Doug moved to, to ABC Family or ABC didn't move to ABC Family um, and became a very different kind of show. And Hey Arnold kind of picked up the torch on Nickelodeon where, uh, where Doug kind of left off. Kind of an unremarkable, you know, it's a good show, very positive. It, it's definitely one worthy of mention. I think it's, it's 
one of the best shows of the 90s on, um, on Nickelodeon. Uh, that being said, I don't think it's probably on my top ten. It's just not maybe the best. Um, so I don't know if I'd put it on there. Moving right along into Pete and Pete. Oh, man. Pete and Pete. This is a, this is a great one. I have to say um, thanks to all of you that really mentioned Pete and Pete. It's just a great show, top to bottom. Um, one thing I will say about Pete and Pete, it so firmly encapsulates the 90s condition. And uh, g- because I gave you the question about, you know, focused on the 90s, that really is something that... Uh, it's really a show I think is worthy of mention. It's it is maybe the best live action show that they Nickelodeon had in the nineties. It it you know, and I spent half of the nineties probably turning this show off because they showed it so much that it was a little bit overweight. You know, they they just kind of threw it at you. It's like here's a here's just a full day of Pete and Pete. Whenever they needed filler, they filled it up with Pete and Pete. So um, having Spend half the 90s probably turning that show off. I have to say, I really do appreciate it now. One of the first, when, as soon as someone mentioned it earlier this week, uh, I jumped onto YouTube and listened to the theme song, Hey Sandy, which is a fantastic song and so representative of the kind of, um, you know, how, how do I want to express this? You know, just, just the, the whole kind of grunge takeover of the 90s while being still pretty mainstream, right? The fact that, that you know, Kurt Cobain kills himself because he can't take the idea of the, the, the movement that he basically started um, moving into, uh, you know, the mainstream. And if you ever want to, you know, see the quintessential show of the flannel-wearing, grunge ethic, uh, kind of, I, I don't know, even psychological you know, like a trip almost kind of a show. I mean, just think of Artie and how crazy it is and Petunia and all the crazy characters. Pete and Pete is the quintessential 90s show, and I, I'm definitely going to say that needs to be there. Uh, that's, that's, that's right up there at the top of my list for sure. Thanks for mentioning Pete and Pete. Salute Your Shorts is, uh, is right there too. Salute Your Shorts, Shorts is one of those fantastic shows that was on Nickelodeon. It was just... It just got at everything. You know, it was, it's the, there were so many camp movies. Um, I was in one. Uh, not, uh, we'll talk about that in another time. Anyway, those camp movies from the 90s, we all remember them. Um, Salute Your Shorts was the quintessential camp show on, uh, on Nickelodeon. All the characters they remember, I mean, Donkey Lips alone, you know, just all the, the great caricatures from Salute Your Shorts. It was a great show, and I think it's 100% worthy of mention and should continue to be um, celebrated as one of those Nick shows that is definitely underrated but deserves to be up there. Really quirky hum- humor, really zany, very campy, not just because it's a camp show, but campy um, humor. And um, I think it, it was... So... Pete and Pete kind of picks up the banner after Salute Your Shorts. Salute Your Shorts is a little too clean cut, not enough grunge. It's not enough kind of attitude. Um, Salute Your Shorts is still the kind of clean cut, you know, there were, there were, there was a little bit of attitude in it, um, but really it wasn't, didn't kind of permeate the whole show like it did in Pete and Pete. Um, Pete and Pete was a little darker. Salute Your Shorts was kind of a bright, happy show with some really weird, crazy, humor and um the ug just think of the ug and uh it just you know it just it was one of those shows that i think um probably didn't get enough attention at the time it, it's it's a great 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 show um and on several occasions rue and myself have just busted out with the salute your shorts theme which you remember every single word from uh to this very day and that says something um, let's talk about Clarissa Explains It All. This one got a lot of mention. Very surprising to me. Um, I remember the show, of course, and I did enjoy it as well. Didn't think it was just another chick show. Um, that being said, can we talk about Melissa Joan Hart for a second? Let's deviate for a moment. Cla- uh, so, so Melissa Joan Hart uh, is a terrible actress. 
I, 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 I say this hoping she'll never ever see this because I'm, I'm completely and totally in love with her because she's a beautiful woman. Clearly she's, you know, I mean, I know she's has kids and everything now, I'm sure. And just, uh, but anyway, the point is I love Melissa Joan Hart, but can we just get it out of the way? She's a terrible actress, right? She's horrible. She was, she's a terrible actress now. She was a terrible actress in, in uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, I think is what it was. And she was a terrible actress back in Clarissa Explains It All, except we forgave her for that because it was a show about, a, about someone sitting in their room talking about life, right? Clarissa Explains It All is almost vlogs before vlogs happened, right? Now, you all know I'm not playing a, a part here as a character, um, but, you know, if I were reading from a script and just talking about uh, uh, things about teenage life and whatnot, this could be, you know, the Commodore explains it all. But it's not. Clarissa Explains It All was very scripted and was very, um, very kitschy and uh, really hadn't made the transition. Um, it was still kind of, still kind of had that 80s feel to it um, rather than having the, the, the 90s um, sensibility to it. It was still, it was an early 90s show. It, it still got to a lot of the things that many of the teenagers at the time were, were, were looking at. Clarissa was that kind of, kind of weirdo of the 90s. You know, she, she definitely was not a popular gal. She was kind of the, the off the beat, beaten path kind of um, geeky, you know, f f flannel wearing, right, um, teenager. But the attitude wasn't there, and I think, uh, and I, but I, the show is fantastic. I would watch it. Um, some of you need to go just get on YouTube and type Clarissa Explains It All, Cowboys, Aliens, and see how, how it was predicted in Clarissa Explains It All. But um, anyway, so uh, it's just a crazy, crazy show, and really gets to the, I remember all the, the scenes with the father and, and um, uh, the, the, the really preppy brother. Um, who I don't remember the name, Redhead. Um, anyway, the point is, the show was really did a great job. I, I really did enjoy Clarissa Explains It All. Melissa Joan Hart is beautiful. I had a mad, crazy crush on her, even at the time. Just thought she was absolutely gorgeous and um, definitely needs to be up there as some of the best, maybe the best show uh, of the 90s. Angry Beavers. If we, had a, if we had a competition about theme song, I think Angry Beavers would probably win. I loved that theme song. Fantastic show. Um, but what's to say about it? Is, it? is it one of the best? Probably. But I, I don't think it really stands out from a lot of the other Nicktoon shows of the era. Um, it didn't really... So Angry Beavers was very funny. But it was not one of the ones I would point to and say, this is one of the best shows of uh, Nicktoons or, you know, or even Nickelodeon. Um, it's better. It's good. It's funny. But it, and and the, the humor is very zany in it. It's kind of uh, loopy. And I like those kinds of shows. But I never really got into to it that much. And I, I have to say... Um, I'm, I'm just going to say no. I, I don't. I, it's, it's definitely worthy mention. Should be on the list, but de definitely not one of my favorites. Ren and Stimpy. Anybody who's been watching the Weekly Ringer knows how I feel about Ren and Stimpy. It is probably the greatest um, Nicktoon of all time, in my point and in, in my perspective. And so the show was very edgy, and John Crick Felusi left the sh left the show because it. He wanted it to be a little more edgy than it than it was possibly going to be because of um, because Nickelodeon wouldn't let them, and uh, Billy West just made that show, and and uh, I have to say that Ren and Stimpy was the best Nicktoon of all time. I'm just going to throw it out there; it's the best, and uh, and it's therefore got to be on my. On my list are the best Nick, Nick shows, and if I'm going to make a block, I'm going to have it in it. And so um, I think you guys picking that one, any of you that put that in your block, solidarity, fantastic work on that one. Ren and Simpy deserves to be in the block no matter what. Here's one that uh, I, I anticipated some of you would bring up, and I think it's worthy of mention, Rocco's Modern Life. Rocco's Modern Life is, again, one of those Nicktoons. I've talked about it before. It's great. It's blisteringly funny. It is not, I think, localized to just being a 90s show, but
but it has a lot of that 90s 